Mr. Beast is a fraud? Who could have ever guessed that? Video by Dogpack404. This video is getting a lot of views in the past seven days. About seven million the past week. It's pretty crazy. We're just gonna watch together and see what's going on. Hopefully my camera can keep up with it because this is a long video. But let's just see what goes, see what's going down in the YouTube world. And it's probably more grunge garbage stuff. So funny, funny thing. Let's, let's go. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. If you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it, you'd be the most powerful man on Earth. We're not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this name. Well, very the smart guy who with just money. throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is Set a gambler. Who would have thought? It's lottery for money. It's called the Quailies Gambling People's Lives. You don't have to pay anything to enter the How is this legal? I don't get it. It's a scam. Hundreds of forged or fake signatures. Honey schemes are great up until they just go bust. <laughs> Very dramatic, uh, and you can tell this is very high production value. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Mr. Beast is right about that. The You just gotta curate attention, get people to watch your stuff, and then you can monetize the attention. That's the only thing that matters. Most people really don't care about anything that's going on in between, and the people that do, for the most part, I mean, maybe they'll step away, but even still, like, the people, most people who care about this guy's content, especially to the extent of someone like Mr. Beast, they're probably gonna continue to watch his stuff because they like the stuff that he makes and the people that don't like that stuff i mean they're voting with their time and attention so it generating more buzz may cause those people to go out of their way to watch those videos but even if they step away it's like it really won't make a difference unfortunately um now we're going to not to say that what this guy's saying is invalid I, i'm more apt to believe people like this especially when they're going up against the uh, the big boys when they say stuff like that because it's like, yeah, a lot of these people, they get to their positions by doing whatever it takes. And usually whatever it takes involves a lot of mayhem, a lot of gross garbage behavior. Because that tends to be what's rewarded. Humans, for the most part, aren't, aren't any better than that. So I am more so inclined to believe that what this guy's saying just because of that. But I'd rather just go in and see what he's saying and use evidence that this guy brings up as a way to determine a consensus. Um, but yeah, no, it's... I made videos about Mr. Beast and... They were positive ones because this, I was judging the stuff that he was doing. Not like, you know, giving away, like building houses, you know, building water wells in impoverished countries. That stuff's good when you just look at that. But then you peel back the layers to all of his other stuff that gets him to a position where he can actually do stuff like that. It's like, I, I don't find it too hard to believe that uh, there's a lot of grunge stuff going on there. So uh, let's see some of that grunge stuff. I wanted to provide some context to this video. I'm a former Mr. Beast employee, and today I am alleging that the company uh, rigged videos and uh, did illegal lotteries and sold fake signatures. I, I would consider that fraud, okay? Thank you. Enjoy the video. So this is part one into my investigation into Mr. Beast. Uh, I recorded this before the Chris stuff came out. I was also going to come out about the Chris stuff, probably in part two or three. Because um, I see a lot of people saying, like, oh, if you knew, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I was going to come forward. And also, like... Going to the authorities isn't going to work because what are you going to say? Like, you heard rumors that this person is this way or that, you know, there's obviously evidence of like the shad based stuff. Like, that's been out for a while. People have internally known at the company that like Chris is kind of a, a potential miners attracted person and, and the company protects her and or they were protecting her and they protected her as long as they could. Jimmy knew, everyone knew. So, yes, if he were to go to the authorities, even if he had evidence, I mean, it's a huge, lengthy process. Plus, this, the system is set up in, in a certain way to benefit people who are in Mr. B's position. You just need money to keep drowning people in a bunch of flagellum, in a bunch of <laughs> disarray, in a bunch of wasting time, right, through the, the court system. and Because it's designed to be that way. It's designed to be exploited. What do you think bond is or bail bond when it goes to jail? You can pay money and then you can get out for a little bit before it's time for court. It's like, it's just different ways to siphon money from people. And when the system is built in a certain way to facilitate that, you're going to get the absolute worst of people. You're going to get people who exploit and take advantage of the system because it's built to be exploited and take advantage of. Next thing, uh, him defending his friend Chris Tyson. That's another thing that I found interesting. Is it for the brand, for him to show his loyalty to his friends because he grew up alongside these people? That's why he likes them. Is that why? Because log logistically speaking, you would think that it would damage the brand, which someone like Mr. Beast, how do you damage that once you get to a certain point? You really have to, even even the people who, like, think of Chris Brown. He's a, he, he's a garbage person. He does so many awful things, but people still show up to support his stuff because they like him, and most people have no backbone, right? They don't hold people accountable in these types of positions. That's not how the world works. There are ways to win. There are ways to hedge your bets. So, it, But my question is, 
What is the angle? Is it, for, is it for the sake of the brand to show that he's a loyal friend to his friends that he grew up alongside? Especially given the stuff that Chris Tyson did, has, has done. <clears throat> That's interesting. I wonder what that is. I mean, he's no, I know that he's doing like personal investigations with his own people to determine whether or not he is or isn't uh, guilty, which I mean, the, the, the evidence is overwhelmingly against him. <laughs> but I don't know. I wonder, I wonder if we'll come across maybe an intention behind that, what his reason is for that, for defending his friend once all this stuff came, came, came to the surface, which people knew about this stuff for a while. It's just enough people needed to know about it for Mr. Beast to be like, mm, okay, I'll, I'll have to address this now. Which sucks, man. That sucks, dude. You know, which I think that's more of a red flag than anything I'm going to reveal in this video, but, um, you know, there's messages happening like, Mr. Beast discords and yeah, I don't know. It's a mess when like Mr. Beast contestants are being exposed to like minor attracted persons and the company's protecting them. You know, there's a big emphasis at the company of like how to manipulate children, like understanding their psychology and everything and like seeing that that's sort of used in weird ways. And you know, there's been like parasocial relationships and you know, encouraging like almost children simping for these people and you know, maybe that's as nefarious as it gets, or maybe it goes deeper. Anyway, here's an old podcast clip of Jimmy explaining that he knows that his audience is young. Oh, which is an old clip. You could say like his audience grew up. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then and his content's only gotten younger. Uh, also, this clip really just shows that like, he understands that YouTube analytics are bullshit because he can try to use that as a defense, but he knows. Uh, so here's that clip and then I'll get into the video. The average demographic is what, 13 through 17? Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says like 18 to 24. If I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I feel probably. like it's a lot like that because, you know, little kids lie about their age or they're on their, you know, like... But well, yeah, and then I have but, like a fucking massive account. one for like the 40-year-old range because all the fucking idiots are on their parents' account. Now, Mr. Beast intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds for profit using uh, three simple steps which closely align with the three major types of behavioral learning. I don't, uh, yeah, a lot of people on YouTube do that because kid content is huge. Because kids, I mean, they are the largest demographic that are more apt to be more emotionally responsive to the stuff that you make, but also have the most time to be able to spend on watching your content and consuming it. On top of other ways that you can, you know, because if you have content that's directed to kid, towards kids, you, it, there's a, you'd presume that advertisers would be more apt to be friendlier to that type of content because there's more stuff that they can shield the kids because they are aware of children's emotional vulnerability. Um, yeah. That makes sense. And he's trying, I mean, he's trying to grow. He's trying to find ways to get himself in the, to further concrete himself in the social zeitgeist so that he keeps, he can get as well known as he is and even more so well known so that he can keep doing more and more stuff. And that usually takes like finagling. It usually takes having to play into, having to take advantage, having to exploit because you're rewarded for those things. That's how it works in life, man. This is the world that humans built. It's, it sucks. But it makes sense why someone like Mr. Beast can get to where he is, because humans, dude. But let's keep going. Step one is getting the viewer to associate the brand with trust and authority. Mr. Beast videos are real, and he's a great guy that gives away big rewards to his loyal followers. I will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are, in fact, fake. Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that benefits Mr. Beast, when they do what he tells them to do, they win big rewards. Is he subscribed? You are subscribed. Here's some money. Have a good day. <laughs> some of them feel like I just walk around with a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, thanks for watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money. When people are devout followers of Mr. Beast, they get rewarded. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards in return. Now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers or random subscribers like themselves are winning big rewards when they do what Mr. Beast tells them. These young viewers are explicitly told repeatedly that if they subscribe, if they buy products or act in some way that benefits the brand, they will win big rewards. By the way, I really like this, uh, the way you set this up with the, the backdrop, the little dots connecting. Is he our new content cop? Is he the replacement? Look at the police thing he's wearing. That's awesome, dude. You're doing your due diligence and the video is uh, entertaining. It's engaging. This is, this is nice. This is good. 
good quality video here. Trust Mr. Beast, watch him help others, contribute to his cause, and one day, he'll help you too. That's the formula. Subscribe for a Lamborghini and to make it You could be in one of these Subscribe right now and you might get picked for the next video. Subscribe to the next video. Subscribe to the next video. Subscribe to the next video. Subscribe and you might win a free car. Subscribe for a free car. I love all of you. Subscribe and you can come next time. I give you a hundred dollars. Subscribe again. Subscribe and you can win. Subscribe and you can win. You could also win a hundred dollars. Seriously, we always fly subscribers down. They never fly random subscribers down. Mr. Beast fakes his videos in ways that are worse than you realize. I say that because he's been exposed for faking videos before and the common response is, why does it matter if the videos are fake? They're just meant to be entertainment. A large part of Mr. B's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. Yes, and it has an, out an effect on the outcome of people's life. Like, he has money of which he can just passively give to people here and there that can substantially change the quality of someone's life. That can give individually, that can single-handedly give them opportunity. That's what kind of makes it a little bit worse. It, because like the extent of influence and power that he has whether or not somebody loses uh, an arbitrary dumbass game and they win or lose uh, like up to ten thousand dollars like that's that's pretty big dude that's pretty crazy that can have a serious effect on people's lives but who cares right as long as he gets his as long as the brand is reinforced as long as he gets videos out, as long as people are enjoying the content, making it more money. That's the only thing that matters in context to monetary acquisition, which in order for Mr. Beast to do the things that he does, to be known for what he does, to keep doing the things that he does and on bigger and bigger scale, he needs that. He's rewarded for that. It, it's, yeah, it's a system that plays into itself. Oh yeah, it's a huge problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. But also, if what we had to build was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. But what we did was scripted, holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pop out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, this raccoon is a paid actor, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, buildings are CGI, it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker, it's just a guy. This whole room is fake, it's an actor and a secret employee at Mr. B, and through this fake door twice, line scripted, this action scripted. In fact, pretty much all the videos on map are scripted. Scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pop out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team of Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million-dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him. Only some asshole would do something like that. Yeah, if you're doxing and bullying the pilot some more, like a f***ing douchebag. Turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> just starts pushing buttons. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into Chad GPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what he came up with, and it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you going to spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that 800 I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's got to be fake. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a huge so, problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. But also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him die through this fake door twice. This line is scripted, this action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million-dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him. Only some asshole would do something like that. After doxing and bullying the pilot some more like a f***ing douchebag. Turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> and Eric just starts pushing buttons. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what it came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. <laughs> more bathrooms. <laughs> you don't need that shit. 
Really? You got that type of money? You have the access to that type of resource? You have a house that's, that's seven goddamn bathrooms? Just empty space. There's no point to that. I never understood that. If you have the money to spend, it's like, what? You have, you're have you a multimillionaire and you buy like multiple mansions? It's like, what the fuck is your problem, dude? You're just a gluttonous, egotistical douchebag, honestly. I always hated that stuff. Really? Seven bathrooms. I get to use one for each day of the week. Oh, wow. What a privilege. <laughs> Meanwhile, most people are starving, especially given the brand of Mr. Beast. Oh, I helped a bunch of impoverished people. He's not, he doesn't. Given all this stuff, does he really give a shit? Probably not. He cares about himself, and as a result, you win. You succeed in life. The biggest YouTuber of all time. You have unbelievable amounts of influence and access. <sighs> oh man, dude. Reality, man. Humans. Reality is indifferent. Humans take advantage of this indifferent landscape, which makes reality even worse. Because why would you not if you're benefited from it, huh? Jesus. Access is my store. Tell them where are we right now? <clears throat> uh, we're at the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. Zach, what's, what's got the kid here? What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of things. Stuff. What kind of things? Stuff? Just like, uh, you know, by catching my dad, you know. For a year? Well, you know, how do you make money? <laughs> how are you, uh, like, surviving? Basically, my strategy is like, 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 uh, like, 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 what are you going to spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really going to change your life. Max, is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. Uh, Mac, let's, let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just like, uh, you know, playing catch with my dad, you know. For a year? What do you, how do you make money? <laughs> How are you, uh, like, surviving? Basically, like, my main strategy is I, I go to, like, uh, like grocery store-type type places. Grocery store-type places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I basically, I basically, I'll do it when I get there. I usually get, like, like, like a, an amount of food that seems like a week or so, right? With, with what money? The money that I've made. How did you make it? Huh? Where, yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. That's, that's the type of journalism you gotta do. If they keep dodging it, you need to fucking hound. How'd you make the money? Uh, dodge, 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 uh, miss, uh, fucking redirect. How'd you make the money? Doing this for that? No, that doesn't make it. How would you make the fucking money? Tell me. Yes, journalism. There you go. That's how you do it. During this time, on the fourth day of seven days training at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have regular raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, the FBI channel that doesn't fake things. Now, in this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 is actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear it. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. We got 50 minutes. But in general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or Someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. It literally fake. I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this live actor video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Okay, so let's just fabricate some contestant dialogue. <laughs> We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. Now, in this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42 and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. So we got 50 minutes. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Ah, it's still real to me, damn it! Hey man, like I fell for that crap. So to what, given this, what other things are fake? Does he not actually build houses for the people? And does it just for the video? Like when he goes to impoverished countries and then like the house like gets blown over or something or like he doesn't help maintain with bills or when he gives somebody a car, they just like drowned in like debt when it comes to actually paying for the insurance or stuff like that. I would, hmm. Yeah, that really opens an outlet for you to just be like, damn, what the fuck is real? <laughs> That's like, what would be the, and also like him saying that it's not real, 
does that like really affect his brand? Because people, the only thing that matters is getting people to watch. And I don't think what people, makes people like the videos, I mean, maybe that's a component, but people just like the, the content that he makes. If he were to just say it's not real, would that prevent people from watching? I don't know. May, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think so, especially when, now that he's gotten to this point in his career, anything that he does is going to succeed. So I'm guessing he's just doing it because it's extra, extra influence points, extra getting in, you know, branding, extra, you know, fucking digging his way into people's psyche. Crazy, dude. Timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that can us not get up for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I should recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside North Carolina is usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Hey, anyone I'm friends with watching? Is that what's saying that? They are never random subscribers. Okay, so Mr. Beast fabricates some contestant dialogue and timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Hey, anyone I'm friends with watching that wants 10 grand? They are never random subscribers. I like these memes. These are nice. He's also entertaining. Maybe that's why he got hired by Mr. Beast. Because Mr. Beast is like, oh, the uh, extra content. More uh, stimulation. Get it in for them kids, yo. Not you, Chris. Just, like, calm down. I meant by our influence. If you subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money. Uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but seeing how much they're willing to help them on camera, I'm willing to believe that they did, in fact, help them off camera. You know, apparently at the end, they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge. And to be clear, obviously the girls had an unfair start with having so many Mr. Beast employees get out immediately. You know, I think they all did deserve $5,000 for that, but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning, I think. I think that's the expectation when you run a game show. But hey, that was a while ago, so I'm just glad they're not doing another rigged boys versus girls video. <laughs> So knowing that Mr. Beast likes the results to be close and that offstage producers can sort of influence how a challenge progresses, I wanna show one more example. This is a real-time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now immediately the intro is sped up and the timer is clearly added in post and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real-time. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. 
And in this video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money. So rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing. But also like, if it were actually real, I'm guess, my guess is that if, if he avoids making it real, it makes it more intense, right? Because reality is usually underwhelming, usually disappointing. And if he makes a video, spends all this money and invests in something, and then the outcome turns out to be disappointing, then it's like, maybe that'll affect his bottom line or something so he can just tell people it's real while rigging it behind the scenes. I wonder, I imagine that's always been like a, a, a part of the show business thing, right? Like Jerry Springer, uh, actually every reality TV show you have, like it's all, it all tells you that it's real, but it's probably uh, for the mo overwhelming most part fake because it's like, <clears throat> if it's real, you can't control for the outcome. And, the, and, and my question is how much does the outcome have an effect on people's reception to the stuff, especially if people are taking into account that it's real. Are people willing to accept that something is real but then ends up being disappointing and then they end up just not liking the thing? I don't know. All I can see is he gains from, the, uh, from lying, from the deception because it, it makes reality seem more sweeter and most people are fucking suckers for that shit. Like most people want to lie to themselves so they can feel like life's better than it really is or more more amazing and more overwhelming than it really is. It's about the flavor. It's not about what's real or what's honest or objective because most people, they can't really handle that. So, interesting. But there are many examples of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie mm. all the knots so that we know they've tied them at the exact same tension. I mean, we get down to inches and then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is on any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game, mm -hmm. but it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can see kind of what area you're in. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And they came to my area many times and I was in the smallest cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I contorted this little four foot 10 body into the smallest space and I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in oh there and they God. opened all the cabinets and my heart was like, oh, they're gonna find me, they're gonna find me. <laughs> And then I could hear them saying, like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. So I am up here. Okay, I feel good about this spot. If it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production. Mm. Hey man, I guess you beat the beast who's faking stuff by faking them out. Don't do this, let me do that. <laughs> Because, I mean, you're going to cheat the cheater, right? Might, might as well get it in. No, like, there's no integrity to life. You don't get rewarded for being decent or having substance. It's about just getting ahead. It's about winning. It's the only thing people fucking care about. Humans are not better than that for the most part. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules. And I guarantee you, if I claimed, if I climbed in the ceiling, Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! Also, I think some of the Mr. Beast giveaways have been fake, uh, but I'll get to that later. So now that I've explained some of the ways that Mr. Beast lies to build trust with his audience, I want to go on to explain how he exploits that trust for profit through running illegal lotteries, selling fake signatures, giving children diabetes, and more. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children who may have authorities in their life that actually use sweet treats or video game detentions as forms of reinforcement. And you aren't born understanding sarcasm Whatever the reason, these reinforced call to actions are more effective than just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version. The call to action giveaway. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. CIA, what did that say? CIA sub, CIA sub lottery or whatever? I'm interested to see how this develops as this stuff gets brought up more and more. Like, well, I wonder if people, this will manifest in the lawsuits. I wonder if it will be taken to court. I really wonder how that will work. 
Because remember, court's designed to be rigged, same way people like Mr. Beast rigs things in his favor so that he can succeed at the expense of others, especially given the dam. I mean, we have to get more into the damages caused, but like, I don't know. If he were to be taken to court, what would happen? And even if he slapped with a fine, would he not just be able to pay it off and then, okay, I'm good, walk away scot-free? Damn, man. Life is fucking brutal. I can't believe people are still doing fucking giveaways! Holy <laughs> shit, it's so annoying! Stop this fucking shit! I'm so tired of it! Fucking 10 years of YouTube, people are still like buying subs for this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm gonna be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How Talk, is this legal? I don't get it! I'm All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. So yeah, that's what a call to action giveaway is. At best, they are a way to buy subscribers, but much of the time they are legitimate scams. Either a YouTuber doesn't actually give away a prize, or in the case of these live streams, they are illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase. And obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just gonna show you the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done and you can make your own conclusions. The FTC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their car, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their Someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets two thousand dollars good luck everybody so this was a six hour live stream uh they took it down off youtube but five hours of it are still up on their facebook page uh, and during those five hours i counted 46 illegal lotteries these lotteries are also run poorly multiple times they would say something like buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win and then seven minutes later go actually the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Stephen uh, K. Okay. Oh, Stephen King. He's just making up stuff as he goes along. Because <laughs> he knows people are gonna believe it. It sounds nice, and that's the thing that matters. People don't care about what's true or real care about their feelings and people are going to and through their feelings they're going to try to define reality to accommodate that despite reality being like I don't give a I don't give a flying shit boy I don't care which makes sense why stuff like this happens right if reality allows all this stuff to unfold and it's just an indifferent universe or different platform then it's going to happen and whatever is going to happen as a result is going to happen because of the input and this is the input and the result is more subscribers more influence more money from mish to beast I like, this is a good video. I like this. Go subscribe to the guy. To Dog Pack. And there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Steven made a profit. Steven's a handsome man. So he actually walked away with some money. We're proud of you, Steven. I counted 13 of these extra shady lotteries where they did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. Okay, so we're gonna put two iPhones in this pinata and we're gonna give it to someone who orders a shirt in three minutes, five minutes. Buy a limited edition shirt or hoodie and we're gonna pick a random one in 10 minutes and give them $2,000. Oh. Did the guy on the left just fucking whip? Sorry, all right, all right. Yeah, you really, you really understand your demographic that you're appealing to here. Have we done iPhones yet? Yeah. Oh, we did Let's one. Oh, wait. Hey, yeah. Daryl, first action. Before we do that, we never picked a pinata. 
So these clearly fit the definition of an illegal lottery. These clips are also not out of context. No one ever said no purchase necessary. There's nothing in the description or on the website. At one point, Mr. Beast is informed that they ran out of PlayStations and he says, are we trying to not sell merch? Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away. Are we trying to not sell merch? So he clearly knows that they're making more money by running these illegal lotteries. Another shady thing he did was constantly suggest that they're doing too many giveaways to make a profit. My guy over there doing the numbers is like, stop, stop please. Like, you do realize every time you give away an Xbox at a thousand dollars, you don't make money. I'm like, oh, I know we're not gonna make money. What are we doing guys? Oh, can I check after this stream? And it's gonna be like, like, oh no. What a waste. Yeah, I know. We're gonna break neutral. Which that plays into it, right? Because it gives off a notion to his audience that he doesn't care about money. Dude, a lot of people would be jerking us off as a good business guy. And I mean, yeah, the point is to make money and he's curating people's emotions in a way to exacerbate his monetary game. Then it's like, I guess, yeah, I guess you're a good businessman. If that's the point, everything else around it doesn't fucking matter when people only care about the profit and they look at that as a reflection of your integrity. It's, it's just superficiality. It's not about integrity in life. Humans don't care about that, man. Just make money and people are going to attach whatever the fuck they feel to you as a result of that. It's the only thing that matters. If you succeed, people are gonna be like, oh, you're just superior. It's just disgusting ape brain garbage. When there was just no way they were ever even close to losing money on this stream. I don't know who this is, but you just got a pair of AirPods. Oh my gosh, we're not making money. Guys, <laughs> we need to stop giving everyone something. We've just like, lost like seven Almost grand. everything, almost everything that someone's bought, we put something in their package. I'm not gonna make money. Like, in five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my god, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked. So it's probably not actually random. You know, humans have biases. Imagine Jimmy tells the guy off camera, hey, pick a name right now. And he sees two names. One is easy to pronounce, one is not. Because people trust him because of his branding. Man, if it works, it works, right? Jesus Christ. Oh man. Yeah, you're, this, this video is pretty good. He's given a lot of information here. I would like to see the if there's any fallout. I don't believe people can get canceled. I don't believe that people can face their comeuppance for the bad things they do in life. That's not how life works. Things go in whichever direction people push it. And if you're in a position where you can curate people's emotions in a certain way that favors you, you'll be fine. You'll do great. That's how it works in life, man. So even, like I said, even if there are lawsuits, even if there is some degree of ramifications, it's really only going to be a small, small blip Right, this, this guy makes so much money, he can just pay his way to everything. That's how it works. Humans are not better than that. God, and the more we pretend that humans are, then it's like, it makes it ironically even worse because it's like, we just gaslight our own, the shitty stuff that we do to each other, that we allow people to do to each other. I mean, well, granted, what else are people gonna, who's gonna stand up to this guy? Unless you're the government. What are you gonna do as an individual? This guy's making a video and there's only so much that can be done as a result of this video getting known and seeing, which is good. I'm glad that it, people are responding to this. But it's like, what is this gonna do? Nothing. Nothing. He'll be fine, Mr. Beast. And I hope that this guy will continue to be able to make videos and stuff like this. Because this is, this is good. Now, given how everything's fucking fake, I would really like to think that the stuff this guy's saying is real. And if it is real, I mean, that in itself is not really a good thing because this is all bad stuff. This is all bad stuff a guy's doing so that he can win more in life and gain more success and influence. It sucks, dude. Life is, life is, yeah, tragic. I already said brutal. Here's another adjective, tragic. This is why lotteries are heavily regulated to ensure fairness. Also, obviously you have to be 18 to play the lottery. It's gambling. Mr. Beast isn't just promoting gambling to children here. He's running the casino. Yes, lotteries are heavily, well, they're regulated, but it's also not, it's not just about the regulation. It's also about whether or not that's enforced or if the rules are defined a certain way to be danced around for people to be able to cut corners. Like, <laughs> For the people who are making the rules, aren't you kind of benefit, if the, you know, the point is life is just 
be happy to make more money to do things not it's not for based off of what's right couldn't you just i don't know curate the people who are building the rules in a certain way to construct the rules in a certain way to be manipulated to be taken advantage of right like there's so many people on youtube who do all these types of things like logan paul he scams audience over and over again with crypto crap like this stuff happens so goddamn frequently and nothing and these people don't receive any comeuppance isn't Logan Paul like trying to sue CoffeeZilla for defamation because CoffeeZilla pointed out that he's a scamming douchebag piece of shit? It's like, why isn't Logan Paul facing any type of backlash? Oh, because he's well known, because he's super successful, because he's doing very well in life and people only give a shit about that and they're going to treat him in accordance to that. He's higher up on the hierarchy, so therefore we need to treat him as if he's superior it's eight brain tribalistic garbage nonsense that it's just uh, years and years of evolution. <laughs> this guy can, oh, 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 oh this guy, he, he gathers all the resources. He must just be better than him. We all have to look up to him and he's better. Like you have no, you, you can't say anything to him, right? Because that's the thing that determines your, your, your worth in life. God. And this isn't even close to the worst stream he's done. Four months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24 hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. And by the way, the rest of these streams were taken down shortly after upload. So all I have is some old clips and Reddit threads talking about them. Now this stream did say, we are doing a ton of giveaways, no purchase necessary in the description. Uh, but to be eligible to win most prizes, you had to make a purchase. Oh, yes. Would you guys prefer, would you prefer that we throw money in random orders? Or that we throw items in random orders. Yeah. Somebody guys... screamed in chat, I want to switch. Hey. Buy a shirt. In 30 minutes, we are giving away my car to someone that buys merch. Which each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery, which obviously Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a, he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability you know, pretending to be ignorant of the law. You know, YouTube's a little different than this. Um, yeah. Because YouTube, I can just do stuff like that. I can just be like, you know what? Pull up a database of 100 people that bought chocolate bars and pick 100 random ones. Got it. I think I can do that over here. I don't know. So mm. I don't want to say anything. And then someone be like, yeah, actually, that's illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find any way to enter the big Tesla giveaway without spending at least $42. But he's doing it and he's profiting off it and nothing's happening to him as a result of that. He's still able to do this stuff and it reinforces his brand. It makes him more money. It, it could, like, you could say the word illegal, but illegal really holds no weight if it's not like applied, if there's no enforcement of legality. God damn it, I just, you can't have faith in anything, in anyone, man. Jesus Christ, there is no right, there is no justice in the world, there's no karma, there's no comeuppance. Like this, uh, clearly if he's doing it and it's working and he's not facing any ramifications for it, then there's something, then that means something. That means he's then able to do that stuff and nothing's gonna happen. Will anything, that's like I said, even go back to the lawsuit thing. If a bunch of people come up and apply lawsuits to him, Okay, now he's in court. Pay all the money that he already is sitting on to be able to help him get out of it. And boom, there you go. Like, <laughs> money really does make the world go round. Money is, is humanity's God. That's, that's what it is. Not Jesus. Not, not, not fucking, I forgot the Judeo-Christian God. Yahweh. Not Allah. Not any other God. It's money. Money is humanity's God because that's tangible. Because that's the thing that makes people do things and not do things and do these things but not those other things. It's pretty bad, man. Humanity's evil. We're giving away a Tesla to someone random who bought stuff. They also gave away 24 tickets, which gave you the opportunity to be in a video. Again, most of these tickets you had to make a purchase to win. One random person that buys in what time frame? 10 minutes. We're gonna put this in someone's order that buys something. And we're gonna have 24 yeah. people. We're gonna put them in 24 different circles million dollars on the line, have some fun, you know what I'm saying? Also, this video never happened. There is no Mr. Beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars. Unless it ended up being 100 people in a circle competing for $500,000, but that's a smaller prize and much worse odds. So like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. Even though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. 
oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Yeah, I always thought that was kind of messed up. I think I said this earlier in the video. He almost, he just entirely arbitrary with the way that he gives out gifts, which it's probably, given that it's fake, it makes sense now. But like, if it weren't and you were actually doing that would just make things, that would defeat the purpose of everything that you're doing. Trying to win stuff for the sake of competition, you have to show display of skill or just chance and just having, being the one that wins. Yet like, okay, you have a hundred contestants, they're all competing for like, I don't know, $25,000 or something. And then you're just like, okay, this guy got out, still give him 10,000. Why not give everyone all that fucking money? Why not just give it away? Oh right, that's not the point. The point is to curate. The point is to, I don't even know. I mean, I'm guessing this, the sporadicness, it plays into the brand, right? Oh, it's just Mr. Beast, he's just a nice charitable guy. He's just willing to give out money and it's so cool. I, I find him so admirable for you being able to just, oh, you want to give away 10,000 just on a whim? Dude, he's just so awesome, man. Such an awesome person. Hey man, I fell for it, right? Some of his videos, I mean, I only watched one of his videos and I've said in other videos about Mr. Beast, there wasn't anything that I could point to, at least that I was aware of, because I didn't go out of my way. Like someone like this, who actually gained proper context knowledge to be able to come to this type of consensus on someone like Mr. Beast. I just judged based on what I saw. And what I saw was being purposely curated, being purposely manipulated. <sighs> take everything with a grain of salt, dude. Even if people are doing stuff that's good or charitable and they broadcast it, for the sake of people being able to see that what they're doing so that that those ideas of charitability could be applied to that person and it's like doubt that first thing it's like okay you're clearly doing this for a reason you're clearly doing this to get people on your side and it worked is he almost at 400 million subscribers now what was it 300 million yeah it's it's crazy dude Another thing that just annoys me is Jimmy constantly says during these live streams that he's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away. Oh, and I just like giving away stuff. It's kind of fun to me. Imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says, guys, the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as a, an act of generosity. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com, anyone watching any of the lives, and um, we're gonna throw iPhones in some of them. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes re-uploads, but almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes laws. <laughs> It was, I thought it was him. I was like, you won. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's go. Wait, it's literally like his like, initial. Who is it? My cousin. <laughs> Wait, really? Actually, that's illegal. Some of the common complaints we see in threads about this live stream are that they only signed large t-shirts. So when they selected an order to give a prize, it was apparently always a large or extra large t-shirt. Uh, they kept saying things like buy in the next 15 minutes for a chance to win and then not honoring it. Multiple people claiming that their name was read to win a prize and they never received it. This person is still tweeting about it to this day. And those comments got downvotes and nobody paid attention because they don't care. They care more about their idea of the situation. No, you did. You're just lying to make him look bad. Oh yeah, there's your god right there, the guy who has lots of money. Everyone worship him and don't allow anyone to put... It's like back in the, the olden days, right, with kings. When, when, the, when the hound in the Game of Thrones looks at everyone in that cavern and just says, fuck the king. Like, I love that part. But then it immediately starts people, gets everyone to start killing each other. Humans are animals, man. Humans are just fucking disgusting, mindless creatures, dude. Gross. Now there's a lot more people complaining about the deceptive sales tactics. Reading all this really upsets me because I spent money I honestly didn't have for five shirts at different times during the live when they said things like, buy now and you will get prize or money. And I received two orders and nothing but shirt, both with MB and one with a heart and one with a smiley. I was hoping for at least a couple things for Christmas for my family. Now this commenter also goes on to explain that she's disabled, has PTSD. Lotteries and scams specifically target vulnerable populations like that. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched a live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited to win something and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no hundred dollars, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. Oh yeah, 
Dude, just look at religion. Just look at cults, which which religions are just large cults, just cults that society has accepted. It's designed to... Why do you think, like, people who run mega churches are just so wealthy? It's because they know that the people who that they're selling these ideas to are going to show up and give them money. The, the small... Uh, money out of the small amount of money that they have so that they can benefit themselves. Hey, you did it, man. You made the money, right? You're a good business person. Therefore, you're superior. That's how it works in life. Garbage, man. And obviously people can lie on the internet, but a lot of people are independently claiming the same things. Like that at the end of the live stream, they said they were putting $100 in every order. Now, my speculation is that they put $100 in every order that came across the table that they signed, but I'd be interested to see how they worded that. If the video of this live stream ever resurfaces, I, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true, uh, which Mr. Beast definitely has this stream saved. He saves all his footage. Uh, so I'll ask you, Jimmy, Will you publish this to prove your innocence? Also using archive.org, we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream. And while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever, uh, it does say this limited T signed by Mr. Beast and crew. Uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew. And it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, no, I guess you, well, clearly it wasn't obvious to people that are watching and we had to, some guy like this had to point it out, you know, uh, which good on you, dude. Subscribe to this guy's channel. Also, I just never really understood the point of signatures. Like, why people find that shit to be valuable? Oh, I met this guy and I took a picture with him. Wow, that made my day. Why? Live your own life, man. Find your own shit to be important. Don't just exist a, uh, an existence where you prop up other people. I just don't, I never understood it. It's cool, okay, cool. You like it, it's a passive thing that you enjoy. I take a picture with this guy. But again, getting, but like, getting signatures and autographs, I just, I never understood the appeal of that stuff. Maybe I just, uh, I just don't get it, right? I'm a, I'm a plebeian. That's why I don't get it. And I never would, right? I just find it weird. I just find it kind of tacky. It's like all of this stuff benefits the person that you're idolizing, who in turn doesn't really give a shit about you, which isn't that kind of... I guess it's the idea of them giving a shit about you that makes you feel good, rather than what reality actually has in store. But even still, like, who cares? The only thing, reason, if I met Mr. Beast, the only reason I give a shit about Mr. meeting Mr. Beast is if he can fucking give me money, if he can make my life better. That's the only thing I care about. I wouldn't give a shit about taking a picture with him or getting an autograph from him. It's like, dude, give me fucking $100,000. That's all I care about. How can you benefit me? Which, through his it makes sense, right? Through his lens, how can we benefit him? And hey, this is how, right? Him exploiting people, uh, trying to manipulate the general consensus in a way that benefits his bottom line of more monetary acquisition, more influence, more success. It's a game, man. Life's a game and you have to exploit it and take advantage to win. You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature, even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Oh. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. This is so cool. I don't get, I don't understand. Yay, he wrote, he drew something on this thing that I bought. Dude, that's so cool. Why? If you, if I can explain to you why, that like the personalization, that's my guess. Therefore, it has more of an appeal. I still don't get it, but still it's like, okay, cool. He spent a quarter of a second drawing something on this thing that you bought and that makes you feel good? Why? Like, cause it's like, you feel like you have a closer attachment to him because of this, it just, it's so, it seems so childish, man. And this doesn't apply to just Mr. Beast, this is so many people, right? Going to see somebody in a live show in a concert, if you enjoy the show, cool. But just the fact that you can get up close to somebody that, that makes lots of money and you know some of the shit that they make that you enjoy, it's like, really? What's the appeal to that, dude? Sheep? Are people just sheep, is that it? Yes, it's a rhetorical, yes, humans are sheep, right? We're all sheep. We're all doing stuff based on the stuff that we're surrounded by. And that's what motivates our actions. And that stuff can be tailored and designed in certain ways to benefit people who are the sheep at the top of the pack, right? Who can 
get them all to into the barn. Right? You can get all the dogs to push them into the barn. I don't know if this analogy's whatever. Let's keep going. That's obviously his. Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. That makes sense, but it's also a weird business model. <laughs> Maybe you just enjoy the act of collecting stuff and then selling it off and pawning off, which that makes sense, right? That's for a profit. That's the benefit. You could sell it to the other people who find that shit to be important. That makes sense. But the people who genuinely like the autographs because it's like, oh, it's a person, it's more personal. It's like that to me, that's like, that's just weird. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream that this is the last time he'd ever sign anything, and that was just a lie. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. You're oh, very the guy smart who with just your money. Throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? <laughs> they are. They do get caught, and nothing happens. They just keep doing the stuff they do and making more money. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> there has to be enough people who are leading a strong enough campaign with the right resources, the right people, to be able to take down someone like this. Which taking down? What is that? Someone like Kanye. I bring that example up. Did he really get canceled? Okay. What 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 changed about his life? He lost a few deals. Lost a few sponsorships. Oh wow. He still wakes up in a mansion. Still drives around in his cars with his entourage. Still able to do the things that he does every day. Still able to go out to eat. Still able to live his life, fly back and forth. And if he were to continue to making shows, and products, and music, people are going to show up and support him because that's the thing that matters. Uh, curating attention. Is that canceled? Or is that just a mild hiccup in his overwhelming degree of success? It's not how it works, people. By this point, Mr. Beast noticed a problem with these CTA giveaways. I mean, obviously they're illegal, but more importantly, they're not as profitable as they could be. Look at it like this. There are two value propositions at play here. The perceived value of the product and the perceived value of the chance to win a prize. So for something like these $42 t-shirts, if the viewer values the chance to be in a video at $10, they need to value the t-shirt at an additional $32 to make the purchase. So the more expensive the product, the less effective the lottery is. You wanna get the product as close to $0 as possible, so people are just paying for the perceived value of the lottery. That's what's most profitable because humans can't accurately comprehend the difference between one in a million odds versus one in a billion odds. They both kind of just compute as, I have a small chance to win. Uh, which Mr. Beast is well aware of this flaw in human mental arithmetic. At past a certain point, the average human is like, large sum of money, click. And like, right. larger sum of money, doesn't really impact the viewing experience. I mean, a flaw in context to human well-being, but uh, an opportunity in context to people who want to exploit that. Make that money, baby. Destroy everyone. Get your bag and then you're superior because that's how this grunge species works. So also the larger your audience is, the more profitable a lottery will be. Anyway, Mr. Beast wanted the cheapest product possible to use for these CTA giveaways. Basically a piece of paper, but you obviously couldn't sell a piece of paper without getting backlash. So in January 2021, three months after the last shirt signing stream, Mr. Beast did a live stream where for only $10, viewers could send a picture to the moon. Wait, JPEGs that are going to the moon? And of course he did more illegal lotteries. Uh, just to keep things fun and interesting, as if putting a photo on the moon isn't interesting enough. Someone who puts a photo on the moon, or, or if you buy the bundle, whatever, and the next 30 minutes, we'll just fly you down to be in a video. Three years later, the spaceship finally launched, carrying beautiful pictures of deceased loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. It fucking exploded. So obviously Mr. Beast refunded everyone, right? Right? Is it Mr. Beast's fault that the rocket exploded? No. Is it his fault that he advertised it as for $10 I will put your photo on the moon? For $10 I'll put whatever picture you want on the moon. That's all such a weird thing. Like, I don't get the appeal of these arbitrary things. If we were to explain to somebody like who's buying that, why do you think that's cool? Oh, I can be immortalized on this rock that humans sometimes touch. Oh God. Yes, people are stupid and they are apt to be exploited and I don't give a shit when they do get exploited, but that still doesn't make it right. I don't have sympathy for them and I think they're, they're dumbass people, but I still don't think it's right, nor is it fair, nor should it be happening. You can have two at the same time. 
I both think that they're dumb and stupid and I don't care about the other side. They shouldn't, that stuff shouldn't be happening to them. Okay. When he couldn't guarantee that? Yes, of course. October 16th, 2021, same thing. Buy this shirt to be in a video. <laughs> Shopify dashboard. We just have like a, a random number generator and then like we just put the number, like if there's a thousand orders, we just put it, picks the number between one and thousand, and then my people give me the name. So, the first person that we're inviting to be in our Squid Game, if you want to enter, click the link in the description, buy the shirt or hoodie, is Alonzo Diaz. <laughs> Bro, this is an actual hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Wait, really? Like they actually sent a hundred dollar bill. Wait, what does what? it say? Oh, now we have to read the message. You and your crew are an inspiration to our young ones. He wanted to send you a hundred dollars. Uh, everyone click the link or the view product thing in the bottom left. Um, what We're going to open three packages and whatever is in those three packages, we're going to give someone random that buys. That's another thing, dude. Fucking humans, man. Garbage animals. You're sp you're giving him, you sent a hundred dollars to a multi-millionaire? What the fuck is your fucking problem, you stupid animal? Oh my God. That's definitely, they definitely got their parents to do that. Unless this kid was given a hundred dollars for his fucking birthday or something. And he's just like, I'm gonna give it to Mr. Beast who has hundreds of millions of dollars. God, you're such a dumbass, man. Even if you're a kid, I don't give a shit. Granted, if that's probably the point where he's trying to manipulate people in this, but it's like, adults are no better, just look at Colts. I went to a Catholic church one time. They went around with a fucking bag or a, a bag attached to a stick just going into the, each line and people would fucking drop their money in. Like, you're all just mindless slaves, man. Jesus Christ. Slaves to your emotions, of which can be curated by emotional fact, by external factors. It's like, dude, oh God. Just because, now, just because people are susceptible and they're dumb and they're mindless, disgusting animals doesn't mean they should be exploited. Again, like I said, like however long ago, a couple minutes ago, I, they, I don't care. People are stupid. They're mindless animals. It's like, all right, it's like people putting their hand on the goddamn stove and it burning and there's a, this happened, this happened, I don't know what happened. Let me try that again. I still don't think they should get burned. That's not fair. It's like a dog, okay? It's a stupid animal. It doesn't know what it's doing, but you have to teach it. Right, it's, it's susceptible to its external influences. It just doesn't know any matter. It's, it's just in its biology. So as a result, that shouldn't be, just because that's there doesn't mean it's okay for it to happen. I mean, it's going to happen because humans, right? Indifference, humans aren't better. But like, yeah, it sucks that that stuff does happen, but it's gonna keep happening and nothing's gonna happen. There's no, no comeuppance. I think Mr. Beast will be fine from all this stuff, regardless of whatever he does and doesn't do. Mr. Beast is the American dream. Now I'm going to get to what, in my opinion, is the most unethical CTA giveaway that Mr. Beast has done. But before I do that, I really want to drive home the point that the closer a sweepstakes is to an illegal lottery, the more money it makes. Because, you know, every customer is supposed to be informed that they can enter easily for free and that making a purchase does not increase their chances of winning. Like you're supposed to say no purchase necessary in all of your promotional material, which Mr. Beast does not do. This legal gray area only leads to people getting scammed, especially the elderly and children uh, who are also being introduced to gambling. The only people who benefit off of sweepstakes are influencers and scammers. Remember Wizza, a sweepstakes company that got exposed as a total scam and shut down? Even Omaze, the charity sweepstakes company, got exposed as a scam and had to shut down in the US? Or back in the day, there was Mystery Brand. You remember Mystery Brand? So Mystery Brand is a website where you purchase different boxes with chances of winning things. Take, for example, this women's Christmas box. It costs $15 to open and you can win the most expensive Los Angeles realty. But you can't even click it, okay? It doesn't even give you more information, but apparently it's worth $250 million. I love that you can't click it. Like they're just like, trust us. There's a $250 million house with your name on it. All the way down to Icicle, site balance. I'm willing to bet that this is probably what 99% of the people are getting. Hey, at least Mr. Beast never wanted to work with this obvious scam. Hey man, if people are doing it over and over again and they're not receiving comeuppance for it, it clearly works. No one's gonna hold them accountable. If they're continuing to continuously doing it over and over again and nothing happens. What does that say? There is no comeuppance. That sucks, but it's gonna keep happening. So the best that you can do as an individual, just keep an eye out for it and try not to succumb. And try to, I don't know, inform the people around you to not succumb to it. But it's like, there's only so much you can do. So just get your own, right? 
I mean, at least Mr. Beast's manager never went on some podcast and talked about how Mr. Beast really wanted to work with this company. No, oh, what's this? Is there anything you've had to say no to? Um, yeah, tons. Uh, yeah. So a uh, good example. So it was about three years or two and a half years ago when I started working with Jimmy, what was becoming really popular were these like mystery loot crate, like internet mm -hmm. sites where you, it's basically like CSGO skins, but you'd go on and be like, here's the Supreme box and you'd pay $50 for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Was like, they didn't write, rice gum did, uh, yeah, quite a few Paul. people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 They got a lot of hate for that. Right. Jimmy was, um, he wanted to work with that company when he heard about it. Cause it was a lot of money and we wanted to give that money away in a video. And I, I had to talk him back on it. I was like, listen, we're not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this negatively. So it's yeah. a long conversation that him and I had to have, which eventually we passed on the deal. And then Jake, Paul and Rice Gum ended up doing that deal and got a lot of hate for it. Uh, Jimmy, why is your manager saying that you wanted to promote this obvious scam to your young impressionable audience? Mr. Beast launched Feastables, his new chocolate brand, back in January 2022. I want to tell you guys about my new snack company, Feastables. They're made with only five ingredients, but still taste amazing. And I'm kicking off Feastables with something I've always wanted to do. Ten random bars are going to have a mystery ticket inside of them, and if you get this mystery ticket, we will fly you out to compete for a chocolate factory in one of our videos. And on top of that, Chandler, we're giving away over a million dollars in other prizes to random people that buy the bars. Dude, I need to buy these. It's interesting to look back at this because a large part of Feastables' marketing campaign was the fact that it's a better for you brand, that it's healthier for you than Hershey's. Less sugar, only four ingredients, all organic. I wanted to just make a better for you snack brand because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's, for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Fusils bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. I got all the feasible chocolates. Let's try them and rank them one to six. I'm gonna be completely honest, totally not biased because if it sells more, I make more money. I'm gonna be honest, and I hope Jimmy is sitting next to me and not getting his feelings hurt. <laughs> Compare it to Hershey's. This is our crunch bar. Okay. This is the one you believe in? Yes. It's not crazy, Jimmy. No? Uh, you don't like crunch bars? I do like crunch bars, but again, it's too sweet. Let me try this. Maybe these are defective. Oh my like God, them. this tastes good to me. Wait, we're supposed to be ranking them. I rated the first one. So we're going completely off of them. Oh, well. We're going completely off of them. We're in too deep. I rate this a 10 out of 10. I give this an 11 out of 10. Keep in mind, only five ingredients. Infinitely healthier for you than the normal thing out there. Also my favorite so far. Okay, here's the thing. I didn't realize you were a dark chocolate guy. Mm -hmm. Another thing about integrity, which makes it kind of even worse knowing how reality unfolds is that if you have integrity, your life's going to be made harder. Nobody cares about decency. Nobody cares about the right thing. They only care about their emotions and emotions are curated. Emotions can be manipulated, take advantage of. You having an integrity, it will prevent you from doing things that it takes in order for you to get even farther ahead of people. You will be punished for it. Nobody cares. That's the hard part. That's one of the many hard things about life. But it's like, and we want to pretend that we're good. We want to pretend that humans are decent. No. Animals. We're just mindless animals. That's it. And when it makes sense why, why stuff like this succeeds exponentially in the world. Because it's emotion. Mr. Beast uh, spent how many years trying to learn how to properly curate people's emotions, and it worked. Look at look what you know of him. You've heard of him. You've probably seen a couple of his videos here and there. It's how it works, dude. It's terrible, dude. I'm not a super dark chocolate guy. I do love dark chocolate. I get it. So seven point eight out of 10. okay. So I'm starting to understand this yeah, man. Okay, okay. Higher. I'm starting to figure this man out. You're gonna like this one, right? You like salt? You I love salt. A sea salt guy. I just I'm gonna get rid of these. I love salt. No, no, I want the no, no, you just don't. You, trust me. You, you like. Is, you're a dark room? chocolate kind of guy. Yes. Okay. If, I, I can read the room. The room is red. Now in 2024, Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. And this initial ad for Feastables, where he calls it healthy, is still getting millions of views a month. Probably because money, right? Cut corners, put a bunch of awful crap in your food, make it cheap, make it addictive. Boom, money. Yeah, if you're one of those people that blindly respects people because of how much money they make, then it's like, you're just an animal. You don't know any better. You just looked at this thing that everyone around you told to be important and you find it to be important because you don't know any better because that's just what, that's how the, how the world works. It's reinforced within the environment, right? These people are doing better. You've heard about these people. These people have influence and those are the things that make people feel good. So people are going to look at that and they're going to feel things. Be like, okay, that's good. This guy's superior. This is good. This guy knows what he's doing in life and we all need to try to copy what this guy does in order to get just to where he is or a semblance of where he is or be able to succeed. Ah, oh, man. I say the same thing. I despise humanity. Like humans are just awful, awful creatures. 
and the worst of us are the ones that succeed. So I sit here and tell you not to be bad, not to do these things, but it's like, if your life made worse as a result of that, then it's like, what good is that advice, huh? It's about your emotions, right? It's about human emotion. That's all it's about. To do things to head your bets, and it makes sense why someone like Mr. B is doing this stuff, because he wins, he succeeds even more at the end of the day. He gets what he wants. If you want more and more, and you do what it takes to get more and more, you're going to get more and more. And people are going to support you for that. And then you could live a life of just endless indulgence into your emotions. Oh, I'm just doing everything I want. I'm amazing. I live the life that I want. Everyone says I'm amazing, yada, yada. Everyone's going to believe it, right? They don't know any better. Humans don't want to dig deeper. So I'm glad that video like this is getting positive reception. From what I gather, I mean, YouTube's disabled the dislikes, and I didn't add the add-on to see dislikes, but I'm pretty sure it would have a pretty hefty, because people just are blindly want to support people like Mr. Beast. I mean, they want to, people want to blindly support the people that they were conditioned into, into idolizing, right? It's just worshiping people based on their money, right? Money is humanity's God, not God, right? Because <laughs> there is none. Also, I don't think you should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products, forcing you to spend more money if you actually want to redeem them. Ooh, a $5 coupon for Beast Burger. Now a single combo only costs $20. Bob's Burgers Palace, or fucking Five Guys. If this shit can be successful, five fucking Five Guys. It's so good. Who cares? It's called Five Guys. What kind of fucking name is that? It doesn't matter. Uh, it the does. burgers are good. Branding matters. Ooh, maybe you should have spent a little less time on this uh, beautiful logo and more time on making the food actually edible. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? Also, be for real, dude. Uh, Five Guys has a nice, clean, appealing aesthetic. You know, the name suggests humble beginnings. This is like a eight-year-old sloppy cotton candy piss burger. Which, I mean, yeah, Five Guys is really not. Maybe quality-wise they're a little bit better, but it's like their stuff's needlessly overpriced. And they're just a bunch of gluttonous, you know, egotistical, right? Oh, we had humble beginnings. We started with Five Guys and now we're all around the world. We're awesome. Spend $30 on a burger, on a whole meal. Excellent. <laughs> I like Five Guys, I like their shit, but it's like, they are also just parasites. They're just money grubbers at the end of the day. Could you, could you, you can enjoy the product of a money grubber. I mean, every product that you indulge in, for the most part, comes from that. Because, you know, why else, how else do you have their product? They need to be able to sell it. They need to get it in front of you. They need to encourage, incentivize you to buy it, right? Just make your money, man. That's the only thing that matters to humans. It literally looks like a piss burger. Sit down. Also, this digital wheel is not remotely representative of your actual odds. Mark Rober has talked about this common deceptive casino tactic before. You recall from the carnival scam video, the most lucrative games for the carnival owner are those where people overestimate their chances of winning. That is exactly what happens in this game. Thinking you were so close to getting a jackpot, when in reality, you weren't close at all. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and people will spend much more money to try and win because they think they can just do it on the next one. That's funny. Yet Mark Rober is a good friend of Mr. Beast and he shows up in a lot of his videos. Because money, because influence, because success. You could talk all about it, but nobody gives a shit. Tell, make people believe you have a spine and they'll tell you you got a spine. They'll be like, no, he's got a spine. Let me defend him. Even though I have no idea what's actually going on. I could just judge based on what's been presented to me, which I, again, I, I'm at fault for that as well. I watched Mr. Beast's videos and I thought some of them, for the most part, were real. Him making fucking houses for people abroad. In, in impoverished countries, building wells and such in places. I, I, I fell for that, right? Now, I mean, that doesn't really make, uh, cause me to make moves on his behalf. I bought a f some feastable bars here and there. I do enjoy that. And I was incentivized to buy that, right, because of the branding. Because I'm aware of the, what this guy does and who he is. Like, I don't go out of my way to buy Hershey bars. It's the same thing. So, okay, yeah, no, I've, I've given him a few dollars here and there. But not, not buying his merch. Not the extent of my, me helping him is watching his videos, which, I mean, that's the main point, right? That's the best way to help somebody. Curate their attention. Curate the attention of... Allow them to curate your attention. That's the best way to help somebody. Watch their videos for as long as possible. Watch as many of them as you can. Everything else that you add on, right? The buying the merch, the in, indulging in the things that he's, he offers, that's just icing on the cake, baby. Retention time is the biggest thing for, that he can benefit. And the best thing that doesn't really take too much away from people, now granted, you could argue that time is the most important thing. 
And if you're giving that to somebody else, then that is one of the most important things in your life because it's like time is finite. That's your existence and you're giving it up for somebody else. You could make that argument, but like something as easy as clicking a video and just sitting back and just looking at it. That benefits people. It's pretty crazy, man. It's the modern world, dude. So I am absolutely pigging out on Feastables. Um, and I'm trying to do this. Mr. Beast is teaching us gambling. Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway, uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just taped. It was taped. <gasps> no freaking way. So it is like really t like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy, say thank to you for picking us. No, he didn't. It was random. I know. Uh, was it though? Was it random? Also, this guy went on to win the chocolate factory and extremely unlikely things do happen, but uh, can we see how the winners were chosen maybe? Because knowing how important it is to Jimmy that every video has entertaining contestants through the whole video, it's a little suspicious. I I'll just say, in my opinion, as somebody who worked for Mr. Beast, I don't think this large YouTuber won a ticket purely by chance. Also, I know that producers are sort of able to pull strings behind the scenes to give some contestants better chances than others. And he runs these sweepstakes to like bribe children with gambling to consume more sugar. Like this is far worse than a lottery ticket because a lottery ticket doesn't give you diabetes and only pay out your rich and famous friends. Like Mr. Beast is bringing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of new people to the candy aisle, whether he wants to admit it or not. People are just walking to the chocolate aisle and instead of buying Hershey's, buying Feastables. Like, you, people who never would have bought chocolate in Walmart are walking mm. to the chocolate aisle specifically to buy Feastables. You're creating so, a new market. Exactly. Yeah. I'm bringing new customers yeah. to the aisle. Okay, I guess he does want to admit it. Uh, you know, kind of a weird flex, not something I would brag about, Jimmy. Also, maybe I should mention technically I'm a certified nutritionist, which really just means I paid $1,200 for a course and then failed to launch a health food company. But I know that poor diet and especially excessive sugar consumption is the number one cause of death and health problems in America, including some of the health problems that Mr. Beast claims to care so much about. Blindness, deafness, loss of limbs. Wow. Which, of course, he doesn't give a shit about, nor does America care about. I mean, America is designed in a certain way to allow food companies, you know, through lobbying, through uh, corp corruption, uh, to jam pack all the food with addictive, low, low quality, low cost garbage, right? That is the reason why Americans are the most obese, one of the most obese countries in the world. It's because of stuff like that, it's corruption, it's money. That's the thing that matters to this disgusting species. So things are gonna happen in certain ways to accommodate that. It's pretty disgusting, but you can't expect anything more. To, you can't expect anything better from humans. Humans are mindless animals. So I say the same thing over and over again. Let's keep going, almost to the end. Mr. Beast also just launched a combo with Zaxby's, which if you get a soda, it's over 2,000 calories for one meal. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. The only thing real in this video is the new Mr. Beast box at Zaxby's. I'm pretty sure this would be illegal in Europe. This is like more calories in one meal than the average 10 year old is supposed to consume on a daily basis. Tell me how I'm killing little kids. Right. New research finds childhood obesity rates are getting worse. The number one killer in America is obesity. The number of deaths in overweight people surpass alcohol and smoking altogether. For 30 days straight, we are going to be giving away $10,000 to a lucky customer who scans the QR code on the back of any new Feastable bar. It's just disappointing to see somebody pretend to care about the health epidemic in the US only when it's profitable for them. I know this point isn't gonna resonate with a lot of people because of how normalized high calorie and high sugar diets are in America, but like bribing children to get into the habit of consuming excessive amounts of sugar, like $10,000 a day as a giveaway is very deliberate because it's trying to create repeat customers that just buy out of habits. Like doing this especially when you clearly understand how much of a health risk it is to these kids. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. It, it's honestly just fucking evil to me. And I pushed back against this a lot while I worked at the company. Oh yeah, but evil is very lucrative. And nobody gives a shit about evil. That's another thing that makes evil so dangerous. People don't see evil as evil. They have their own ideas towards everything. Good is good to somebody, good is bad to another person. Bad's good to another person, bad's bad. It really just depends on who sees what, how they feel about it, the types of information they can use to come to a consensus on something. That's the only thing that matters. That's what makes evil so bad. Because it, it masquerades itself, it disguises itself as a billion other things. 
And that's, that's even if like people can come across the right information to discern whether or not something is evil or not. But that's another, th another great thing about evil. Makes a lot of money. And of course, if, you, if a disgusting species only gives a fuck about this, then you're going to find more evil. Because that's the thing that benefits people, that makes them do better with their, in their lives at the end of the day. That's the only thing that matters. Yay! Mr. Beast, baby! For Halloween this year, Feastables is planning on putting a million dollars in a chocolate bar. And they wanted to do a bunch of like scummy marketing and shit. My manager literally said at one point that they wanted to associate buying a Feastables with your dream coming true. So they're pitching ideas like, you know, buy a Feastables, win 10K, uh, buy a Feastables out of a vending machine and the vending machine just starts spitting out money, buy a Feastables and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't wanna put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, I feel like Feastables is 70% a chocolate company and 30% a lottery targeted targeting children. And this higher up person at Mr. Beast said it was probably closer to the other way around and was laughing about it. Like 70% a lottery, 30% a chocolate company. Everyone knows it's just the call to actions and call to action giveaways especially that drive sales. As soon as they stop, it's hard for large bargain retailers to sell this shit for 70% off. That's why they push them so hard. Once they stop the diabetes lottery, no one buys. Also, this is the website right now. Mr. Beast wants you to join the crew. Just so weird and scummy to me. It's an interesting quote. I don't know if that's even true. If you ever bribe people to use your product, your product is dog shit, which who cares about the quality of the product? The point is money. If that's the only thing that matters, however you can get that money is the only thing that matters. Quality doesn't matter. Substance doesn't matter. Integrity doesn't matter. Get the money. However you do it, nobody cares. They are going to look at the thing. They're going to look at the final a aspect of it, the monetary acquisition. That's the only thing they're going to look at because that's the only thing that matters. Uh, yeah, welcome to humans, man. If you, well, you're, you're a human. We're all humans. I'm a human. You should be able to acknowledge this stuff and I guess just disregard it. I don't know, not entirely disregard it. Try to have some degree of understanding of it so it doesn't bring you down so that you can make moves on your behalf so that you don't succumb to these types of things just to prop up other people. It's the best thing I could say. Because <laughs> why would you be a good person if this is the way that things are? Why would you? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. And people aren't going to see you as a good person if you're a good person. They're going to see you as a good person if you can benefit them. Whether it be emotionally, whether it be tangibly, people only care about themselves and they're going to define things based off of that. So. I believe all the Feastables giveaways do have official rules and no purchase necessary clauses somewhere, but it's very difficult to find them. In traditional media, if you advertise a sweepstakes like in a commercial, you have to say in the promotional material itself, no purchase necessary. Somehow Mr. Beast gets away with not saying no purchase necessary in any of his promotional materials, not the videos, the descriptions, pinned comments, nothing. To celebrate our launch of milk, chocolate, and sea salt, we went out and we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prizes you see on the screen. And prizes aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to feastables.com right now and order some chocolate. Only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating all the cake. The only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the Feastables Twitter account because it's a rule of the platform and even still they try to push it. No perch neck or hidden deep in the Feastables website under a FAQ. And to enter for free, you have to mail in separate three inch by five inch hand addressed written index cards up to 10 a day. Do you think kids are gonna do that shit or just beg their parents when they're at Walmart for the YouTuber diabetes lottery ticket? How is this legal? How do you mail something without making a purchase? Cards, envelopes, stamps, the free entry method can cost more than the chocolate bar itself. Also going back to sweepstakes law for a second, payment isn't the only form of consideration. Consideration can also be time or effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast in some way. Like, I don't know, if he told his fans to clean up and organize his Feastables displays in Walmart for a chance to win $5,000. Shelfie cleanup and $5,000 drawing? They thought this was going to be a monthly thing, uh, but it got a lot of controversy, obviously. How can I successfully clean up the shelves? Wow, glad you asked. No bars on the shelf? 
Go find an employee and ask them to check to see if there is product in the back room and ask them to bring them out so you can put it on the shelf to match the tags. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. And I heard about that. <laughs> Probably work too, right? Get your slaves to make you more money, huh? It works. They're slaves. They don't know any better. <laughs> Damn, man. Oh, man. Yeah, new levels of just... Like, he's a god to these people. And they don't know any better. They, they've been conditioned to idolize people so that they can benefit those people they idolize while they're just props that serves the only purpose of making more money for their gods. My god. What the f***, dude? Imagine a seven-year-old looking for the Walmart manager so he can ask to stock shelves? for a chance to be compensated? Dude, was Walmart in on this? This was not just one off-the-cuff tweet. This was like planned with instructions and graphics and everything. Also, a company asking children for selfies is a little bit weird. And while you're at it, if you want to maybe move some Hershey's bars and make sure that Feastables has plenty of space, I wouldn't complain. I just cannot believe they were gonna give $5,000 to one of Mr. Beast's child laborers for stocking shelves. And no one at Mr. Beast was like, Hey, this is a terrible idea. Uh, actually, if you said that, you'd probably get fired. This is the best tasting chocolate on earth. Good job, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we know that's the best tasting chocolate in the world? You're fired. What? This is such horse shit. You can do that? I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. The most shocking result was that Feastables never earned anything higher than a third place ranking. But I do think their branding is like, world's best chocolate bar is, um... How do, you, how do you get away with that? World's best chocolate. World's best pizza. What does that even, what does that even, what does that even fucking mean? Define that yourself. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But I would think you'd have to, I don't know. I, I'm sure whoever worked on his marketing gave some thought to it or something. Okay, one last point of consideration. Prolonged attention is definitely a form of consideration. In the attention economy, it is the valuable resource that advertisers directly pay Mr. Beast for. So in these live streams when Mr. Beast says, hey guys, today we're doing a bunch of illegal lotteries, but also we're gonna be giving away some free stuff to people who keep watching. He does that to boost viewer numbers. I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching, okay? Yes, though I said that earlier in the video, the, to curate the people's attention for a long, long amount of time, like, something as easy as clicking a video and then watching it, like that's the thing that people can make money off of. I can just take my own personal exam, my own YouTube videos. The ones that were the most valuable to me, the ones, I mean, views and retent, the ones that were the most valuable uh, for me were the ones that are the longest, that I put the least amount of effort into, the ones that I can get out in rapid succession. I get, I get benefited from that. I mean, not right now, I haven't been monetized, but to making more and more videos and I do it that way and I make the videos longer, even if I put less effort into it, those ones are way more lucrative. You get rewarded for less effort, for having less integrity, for not being good at what you do. That's how it works, man. That's just the way that it's designed. Because that's more time for people to shill you more advertisements. The... <sighs> Sorry, not only what comes along with that is that you're, not only are you rewarded for being lesser, for putting less effort, for just getting people to watch, you're punished for trying, for being better, for having higher quality stuff. That makes it extra worse. But reality, baby. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, randomly, I'm not gonna tell you when, it could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm gonna randomly pick one person watching this IG live stream and one person watching this YouTube live stream. I'm gonna give you each $5,000. So, Brilliant. keep watching. There's no predictable intervals for when Mr. Beast will give things away for free to people who watch. So you have to be present when they happen, which means viewers have to keep watching, which is time and effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast. The more viewers, the more money Mr. Beast obviously makes, either directly through sales or AdSense or just getting boosted in the YouTube algorithm. So even the free giveaways could and should be against the law. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the currency you pay with is attention. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? 
Well, of course. Uh, or labor or money sometimes. Yeah, his core audience is like, I'd say like 10 to 12 year old mm. boys. Older people are a little bit over him. Some people kind of question the ethics, you know, they sometimes say in these videos where he like builds all these wells or, you know, cures people of this blindness. It's almost like he's exploiting people for these views. So older audiences don't love him, but this tween audience, they love him. And they're thinking, you know, watching him could get me a car. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching. Okay, now as far as fake giveaways go, I'm sort of limited in what I can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued. So my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks and personally, I believe that is intentional. Here's one example where someone on Reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting Mr. Beast use them in a video. Five months later, they still haven't received their dog food. I actually sent this post to someone who works at Mr. Beast and they said they were gonna send it to the PR team and then the Reddit post got taken down. So I don't know if it got resolved. Here's another example of things slipping through the cracks. The second thing that I probably would do different is invest. And I know what y'all about to say. Y'all about to go to the clip too, where Jimmy said that we set a certain amount aside to invest. I know you talked about wanting to maybe invest 50K and then set aside like the other 23 for just other little nuances yes. here and there. This is not me calling anybody a liar or anything because I know what, what y'all do, I know what the internet does. But what I think what happened was somebody that worked for Mr. Beast or something like that was supposed to probably help me invest, but that didn't happen. I talked to Jimmy, uh, when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like got the remaining amount in my bank account, I was telling him, I was like, man, I don't want to fail. I don't want to be like how everybody's saying, like I'm gonna run out of money and do all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, Jimmy, please help me. And he said he was gonna help me and trying to, and we was gonna invest, but yeah, that didn't happen, so. If you actually watch this video, you know, Mr. Beast does say that they're not gonna be irresponsible, that they're gonna try to set Mark up for life and that they are gonna help him with investing. What we're actually gonna do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. So we're gonna make smart purchases like a house, cars, and do some investing. But according to Mark, Mr. Beast only gave him an hour to plan what house to buy and then gave him only 24 hours to spend the bulk of his money for a video. Time. I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have planned out stuff better. Like that was the, the best, best example I can give you is when uh, we had planned out the house and stuff. I literally have had an hour. He, he had somebody come to my house and we sat down and we planned all this in an hour. Yeah, they came to my house and we planned this out and yeah, in about an hour. So I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have did a couple things differently on the time management side, which I guess I really couldn't help because I had to spend it. I had to spend the money and I had to like do all this. So I'm starting to think he might've been a little bit better off if you didn't make him spend a million dollars in 24 hours for content. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. All I need from you is a signature right here. The vehicles are yours. What we're actually gonna do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. You better not read it. You're a millionaire. You ain't got time to read. <laughs> the you. more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God you won the million dollars. <laughs> now be like shocked. Like have your hands over your face. Like you're as emotional as you can be. So like have your hand reaching for it and then like be like shocked. Like you're, yeah. Now act a little surprised. Like be like really shocked with your mouth open. I guess my slave analogy was right on point. Uh, use it from the SpongeBob movie. Cause it makes sense. That's how it works. <laughs> Just control people. They'll make moves on your behalf to make your life even better. Man, that was good. Good video. Yes, yeah, subscribe to Mr. Dog Pack 404 as always. Link will be in the description and I believe a lot of stuff he's saying because he had receipts and he had screw jobs and was explaining everything in articulate detail. So I'm not surprised. I'm really not. There is no extent to human depravity. So thank you for watching.